Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, April 26, 2020. I'm Dr. Five and as usual we have our co-host Wombat on the phone with us. Hello Wombat. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns over heaven uh-huh. and earth and everything else because our God is an awesome God. I yeah. said it was amazing. It was well thank done. You. It was well done. Thank Subject you. was a little off, but eh. thank you. Thank you. Our guests today are uh, Boudreaux and Joey Woods, uh, J- JW, um, Dread Pirate Hicks, and Chad the Impaler. Uh, did I leave anybody out? I think I got everybody. Okay. Um, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. Also, did you know that there was a streaming atheist call-in TV show what? broadcasting here in Knoxville and has been for over 10 years? What? Did you know that one, Matt? I can't believe it. That's so cool. I was really excited because I thought they couldn't get any higher than Endgame. But now that they're Endgame. coming back with the new series, I'm like huh? really excited. I don't know. Like, I wonder who the big bad will be because I spent so much time uh, with Thanos. I really don't know where this is going to The only go. big battles we have are with believers <laughs> who call in and talk to us about. Uh, as long as Spider-Man's there, I'm happy. So it's all good. <laughs> no, We're good. I think you'll miss Spider-Man. But it's uh, it's on the air it's been it's been on uh, regular community access tv for 10 years but we've gone video now and streaming online so uh, we'll tell you how you can watch that after the mid-show break as well and if you'd like to interact with us during the show go to facebook and search for digital free thought radio hour and use the messaging function to send us questions or comments nice uh, Wombat, what do you have for us today? Something about projection? Or... Yeah, I heard we we're going to be talking about Mickey Mouse. And oh, uh, oh. wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me frame this better. <laughs> that kind of projection. What do the Ninja Turtles, Mickey Mouse, and uh, Twilight, if I guess Twilight a little bit, have in common? They all got people animal things. And we it just shows oh, that, mm-hmm. hey, we like to put people traits on animals. And it's kind of weird. Yeah. Okay, we I'll might, use the word anthropomorphizing anthropomorphizing what does that word mean that's a big word yeah giving certainly and certainly it's not limited to uh putting human traits on the humans it's on the nature generally Mm -hmm. wow dry pirate tell me about it well you know i i just i see this a lot uh it's the so the anthropomorphization of nature of the world which really kind of connects to um magical thinking that there's agency behind uh some of the things that go on in our world uh, like clearly lightning. don't have agency yeah. um you know mother nature mm-hmm. there you go there's the big one right there and everything else is sort of underneath that but again it you 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 tend to do what you practice and if in your mind you're constantly referring to nature in these human quality terms um even while you may rationally and logically think those things don't have those qualities inherently, um, there's still a tendency to, um, you know, essentially put a face to the faceless. Mm. You know, when I hear things like that, it's almost like we are really good at making patterns and a really good analogy that we tend to go towards is, Things are like us, right? Mm-hmm. So like, if I'm having a bad day, everybody else must be having a bad day. That gives me permission to be a jerk to everybody because mm-hmm. everyone, everyone hates Mondays. Everybody likes the music I like. But like, as we grow up, we realize that may not necessarily be the case, but we still have like old hangups of like, oh, I don't understand how this works. I don't like saying I don't know. I'll just say a person did it because I'm a person and I can do things. Mm-hmm. So in a weird way, I'm just sort of like extending that out into nature in a, in a sense. Right. Does yeah. that make sense? I'm, I'm throwing that out for critiques. What do you guys think? I hey, think Pujo. so. It yeah, co- sure. comes oh, from... Sure. Sorry, go ahead, Pedro. No, no, no. Chad, you got all it. All right, all right. Uh, I was just thinking about fables mm. uh, from, from childhood. We're told stories about animals, and we anthropomorphize them so that children can understand them. They love animals. It holds their attention. We push these human traits into these animals to try to 
uh, somehow subconsciously code our children to understand um, overarching themes. Uh, and maybe it starts there. Maybe, maybe we have found a way in to start programming the firmware of our children using things like fables. And then uh, it's a wonderful hack throughout life and the way we make sense of the world. You know, it, we can only see it from our perspective. Well, not necessarily. We try to see it from other perspective, but I don't know. Fables just made me think about stories. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I got some fables. What was your favorite fable growing up? I had a Nancy the spider. I don't know if you know about those. I don't know a Nancy the spider. Is that uh, a Caribbean it, type thing? Yeah, it's a Creole, probably comes from Africa. There's a lot of African ties to it, but I imagine it could be easily moved around. But it's like a spider that is very clever. And you wouldn't necessarily think that a bug would be the main character in a story, but he's just constantly up against really severe challenges but figures out a very clever way around them to get what he wants. And then sometimes hmm. he gets, you know, still pegged at the end, but that keeps it exciting because you never know if it'll end on a good way or a bad way, but he's always hustling. <laughs> I, think, I think the first one that I remember was Charlotte's web. The first one yeah. that really okay. stuck with me mm -hmm. because oh, it was okay. a cartoon sure. as well as a book. Boudreau, mm. what's, what's some of your uh, uh, fables or what do you think about this com uh, conversation? I'm trying to think of my fables. I, you got um, kids. Just, yeah. You? Well, do you um, tell them, like, are all your fables just human characters in, in Sam Harris t-shirts? <laughs> all, all the fables for the kids are Star Wars related. So uh, um, the, 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 where you were starting with this, I, I think I'm tracking what you're saying, Ty, in, in that I think we find it easier to categorize things or to you know, map things onto analogies, and, and it makes it so much easier to understand. It's mm -hmm. certainly like that in mathematics, where if something's really complicated, you can't come up with a mathematical model that perfectly predicts it so you come up with some an analogy for it and it right. gets you close. but it, but you can you can you can better understand it so i think there's a comfort and then there's also a, a learning hack i think to to doing this and you 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 um if you want to understand how, how thunder or lightning works you you can kind of hack it by by making it a god that did it you know uh or or a, a life force inside the earth that caused it and that just when you're young, it makes it easier. But I think as we get older, you learn things uh, faster mm. by using those tricks. Yeah. Uh, I just but is, you know, part of the recognition is that it's a trick, that it's not, uh, you know, a quality that something possesses as an inherent quality. But I, that's kind of what I get at is um, because I, I see this amongst other people who – you sort of refer to things in nature um, as having some sort of agency and and in actually believing it. I mean, I have a I have a niece that uh, you know she owns one of these uh, um, stores where they sell tarot cards and Ouija boards and crystals and all that kind of stuff. And oh, that's I right, you're in France, so of course you would say it like that. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, You're Canadian. You 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 have to say it that way. Uh, in my I, head, I'm I like, I have to. Yes. Oh I, my God. Tarot. Right. Tarot. You said tarot. Tarot, tarot cards. It's like, why yeah, do you say it like that? Oh, he's tarot. Canadian. That's right. That's the all. Tarot good. card. Uh, well, You're all right. more guy alone. Oh my God. Get out of here. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, you know, in I mean, those are places where you know runes and stones and tarot cards and all that kind of stuff have a connection to uh, nature through agency and mm. uh, you know, the, the tendency of many people to actually believe that those things are connected in that way. I think it's a, again, it's the anthropomorphization of uh, human qualities onto the natural world. I'll throw something out. I had a girlfriend who did do tarot card, tarot cards, right? And uh, she used them as a means to write better stories because Mm. The cool thing about tarot cards is they have characters that are stacked on the deck and you place out the cards and, and you're essentially making up a story based on the placement of the cards. Mm -hmm. so the cards that the, the random association of all the cards can really come up with some really compelling narratives if you're really imaginative sure. and come up with like a story that, that is breaking the molds of a lot of, you know, classical literature. Cause people say all stories build down to just like four or five different tales. When you do like this randomized setup, you actually are telling a story that's like, I don't even know how this is going to end. I'm just, but I'm, I'm, I'm composing something like on the fly and it's a lot more fun doing it this way. Mm -hmm. So using that 
as a tool. She doesn't actually believe it, like right. not take it seriously, but she's using it as a means to, to improve like her lifestyle or stuff like that. And I'm like, that's cool. And yeah. I think I, I'm, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put this out. Like we make models with our, you know, squishy brains. It's one of the best things we're, we're able to do. And we do it all the time, whether we know it or don't. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I guess what really matters is, are we taking it to the point where we believe it as a literal objective right. truth? Or are we considering it as for what it is, just a model that best reflects reality or something that we can tweak to better anticipate things that will happen in the future and so on? Uh, mm. JW, what do you think about that? Got to unmute myself here. Um, I think uh, bringing together um, fables and attributing agents and all that, um, it's, I, I, I completely agree with you. Like there's, there's a, a there's kind of a line, it's like a, like a spectrum there though, that we don't want to, we've got to compartmentalize these things. Yeah. Like a continuum. Yeah. And, um, I don't, and think as a majority, as a human race, we're not really doing that. And, um, but I, I've read this book, um, actually two books this year, um, thinking fast and slow. Um, I'm horrible with authors' names. Thinking fast and slow, and mind. Um, Danny Kahneman, right? And yeah, Daniel. And it's what was really fascinating about it is he is they both kind of painted this picture of how these this particular thing that we do with our head that is not beneficial now might have very well been the catalyst of our survival our, our survival at one time. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Or how cult like we are. And at the same time, how um, magically thinking we are might have actually been one of the crucial why we made it this far. But now we've come to a time in human society where we got to like reassess this. It's just like, okay, we got these things going on, but are they real? Are they reliable? You know, that, that would be my that. Yeah. And then like, what's the best way to figure out between the two, right? Yeah. Yeah. Larry, what, or, uh, you mind filling me in on how you feel about all this and and well, have you ever <clears throat> had fables growing up did i what growing up did you ever have fables growing up what were the what were the classic fables of the 70s like the roaring oh, 70s <laughs> um, 60s <laughs> 50s I, I tried to give you some credit i tried to give you some credit <laughs> no no i was born in 50 so hmm. um you know brer rabbit and the, and the those type of fables uh okay. three little pigs of course growing up um, you you were alive the, during the dr seuss zeitgeist basically yeah yeah, yeah definitely yeah mm -hmm. cat in the hat all that stuff yeah, yeah. that's yeah. A, those are the american fables that we have now mm -hmm. like a right lot. yeah and building a little bit on what uh jw was saying um uh, back when we were in still in the in the woods in the forest uh, before we we built civilization and stuff, and we didn't know how anything worked. Mm. Uh, if we if we saw uh, the bushes rustle over there, it could either be the wind or it could be a tiger. Yeah, uh, this is an example that's used a lot in this particular instance. Um, I mean, the people, our ancestors, who thought it was a tiger, ran away, and if they those that <laughs> thought it was the wind. <laughs> didn't run away. Of course, if it was a tiger, they killed him and they didn't reproduce, didn't pass those genes on. So all the survivors that are on paranoid. The today, <laughs> yeah, well, they're paranoid, I guess, but sometimes it's rightfully so. But uh, mm. we look for agency where there isn't agency mm. a lot mm -hmm. of times. Like uh, going back to the lightning and thunder, we attribute it to agency, a God who lived in the cloud. You know, it didn't just spontaneously happen course back when we didn't know anything about it uh, we we projected our own human traits into the clouds and say well there's a there's a man up there throwing lightning down yeah that's where lightning comes from mm. but since we have discovered now this science is our best tool for uh inquiry doing queries into nature we know better than that we know uh, a whole lot better than that and uh the the beliefs that we have in supernatural beings is really just an artifact that needs to be dropped at this point. Mm -hmm. Doing a lot and, of harm. Yeah, and that and that would be a point I I would make with respect to this whole thing is that, um, you know, sometimes old habits die hard, and it's about being mindful. I mean, I know, uh, you know, I have conversations with atheists regularly 
who say, oh my God. And I think that was actually a topic we had touched on in a previous show. You mean about, as like a, a punctuation declared? Yeah, as a statement? punctuation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for myself, I, I just try to be mindful of using those phrases. Oh, uh, that's because, interesting. Because I, I don't like to train my brain that way. I mean, you know, I'm a firefighter. I do what I practice, right? So, you know, I know the just how repetition sort of brings things top of mind. And then all of a sudden you're acting without thinking. It becomes just, um, you know, a conditioned response or a habit, right? Um, and, and that's where I'm, I guess that's where I was going to with this whole anthropomorphization thing is that our, you know, this, you know, uh, tendency to, uh, you know, see agency in, in nature, um, even as science draws us away to understand the true causes of these things, uh, sometimes we practice these behaviors, which kind of hold us back in some respect, I think. And, you know, about being mindful of who we, who or what we attribute, you know, the physical causes of, uh, the universe too. I <laughs> can, can I, you touched on something a little interesting. I want to take just a slight detour and we can get right back to anthropomorphization. But like the idea of saying something in the nominal sense, like, oh my God, right? When you don't mean a specific deity, because God's a job description, you know, it's not an actual person. And, mm. and I feel like it, it carry, like, even in, other languages they say oh my god like uh like it, it, and and they don't mean it in a in a spiritual sense they just mean like oh man that's so crazy that you would have to like appear to you. yeah <laughs> and i i've trained myself sometimes to say as a replacement seven hells because i was really into game of thrones at the time <laughs> <laughs> thanks 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 uh but i would say like i remember doing an sc conversation and i was at larry was there um kentucky free thought forum and there was a um trans person there and i was doing a conversation with with them and i said oh that's so cool dude and and she said or they said uh, i think it was i think she used pronouns she she said oh i don't like being called dude and i was like oh i'm i'm sorry i wasn't calling you dude i just say dude is like oh dude that's awesome but i didn't mean it in that way and i think i said and said like i use it like as a punctuation mark sort of like Oh, that's so cool. Like Jesus, that's cool. Like, dude, that's cool. Jesus, that's cool. She's like, and she said, my name's not Jesus. It's Tiffany. And I'm like, oh my God. And she's like, I'm an atheist. And I'm like, I don't know how to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. So like, in a sense, you have to like, know, like there's some people take it more seriously than others. And I can understand that in a case by case, but I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't waste, I wouldn't exert the mental energy to, to refrain from saying certain phrases as long, and what I really more care about is the intentions behind it. And if I say like, Oh, dang it. I don't mean, or like, screw it. I don't want to find a screw. I, I just, I'm just saying something. Does that seem reasonable? What do you guys think? I, I think you both make actually excellent and very rational points on the same, same particular topic. I mean, as you know, as we use our words are really important. And um, as a, I, I've been musician and poet, I uh, love poetry and I do comedy and all that. And I've always, I've, I've always loved words and how you can organize them. Like I wanted to be a pastor and all that. And so I do think, at, I think you're both right at the same time, in, in my opinion. It's just like, there are people that hyper fixate on, on words and not really think about the meaning behind them. But at the same time, I think, um, Dread Pirate Higgs makes a makes a great point as well. It's just like, it, it, if we get into um, a relaxed view of something, that maybe we shouldn't have such a relaxed view or relaxed um, attitude about. Um, could it take our mind back down a road that we shouldn't go, or see something as not as serious as as it should be? Mm. No. Right, and and and. Part of the thing is I, I wanted to be careful because uh, Wombat brings up the point uh, through, through his illustration there. Um, I don't mean it as a, as a way to criticize or, or you know, um, be hypervigilant uh, in conversations with other people. It's about being mindful of, of what's going on in my head. Yeah, I did uh, that. You know, I can, and I totally respect that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm absolutely about that. Right. Yeah. 
Pujo, you're kind of quiet. What do you think? <sighs> yeah, another um, kind of to bring us back to the to the science of of what's going on here. <clears throat> I, I think um, another another plug for a a book because we tend to be kind of a mini book club on this show sometimes. Yeah, do it. But um, uh, Donald Hoffman. Uh, I didn't I didn't read the book, but I heard a good podcast on his book, The Case Against Reality. Um, mm. and I, haven't, I haven't listened to this podcast in a while. I would have loved to listen to it right before this because it's been a while since it came out. But if I recall, it was the Sam Harris episode, of course. <laughs> but um, that, he and his wife were talking to this guy about his book and, and the idea that how evolution didn't, you know, because obviously evolution isn't like purposeful, right? It's just a reaction. It's, so evolution didn't prepare us very well for perceiving reality. Right. Oh, that, what? Really? Yeah. So well, I don't. Okay. Well, no, well. I, I, yeah. I mean, I, th I think at, at, a, at a at a very deep level here, where the way we perceive the world is really just kind of ev evolutionarily learned, right? So, so how we mm. react to to sound or sun or 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 danger or sounds or anything like that is just a just a evolutionary reaction to survive. But the actual how reality truly is um, is really just an interface, and 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 I'm I'm butchering their their his book here. But um, if if you're curious more about this, I'd, I'd recommend it, or at least the podcast. But and I think they they use a nice analogy again, a better way to understand this complicated thing that we're trying to trying to put into words. You can use an analogy. The when you get on your computer, like a, a Windows PC, and you go to your desktop that what you see is an interface it looks nothing like what the computer actually is in reality mm -hmm. it's just an interface it's got big buttons you can click on things pictures images but when you look at what a computer actually is it has nothing to do with that it's there 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 aren't little things to click yeah. on it's just a <clears> bunch <throat> of circuits i think but, what you what you're trying to say is our, our brain will tell us whatever we need to to make it to be able to survive uh, yeah. If it's true or not, uh, it we it, what's important is how we react to the situation. Yeah. And if the if the if our brain wants to tell us it's a ghost, um, and we believe in ghosts, you know, then we'll see ghosts we'll react we'll see, yeah. as if it was a dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. selection pressure from the past forcing selection us to. Pressure. Uh, I love that. Sorry, that's that, that's a buzzword. I think right there. I love it. Yeah, right there. Um, yeah, selection pressures from millennia past mm -hmm, mm -hmm. telling us that we should be more alarmist because that i mean that that's who was selected for i mean that we're we're the we're the process of those that did uh run when the bushes rustled we're not mm -hmm. the ones that didn't they didn't survive their genes didn't survive we've still got because genes gene traits can be recessive for years and years and years people pop up and with different combinations you get different Everything's a spectrum, it seems. You're somewhere on the spectrum of this and that. And um, yeah, I, I think it's important to have one foot in the past and understand uh, that, that you have to live there because until we have our scientific explanations, all we have are our fables and our stories um, that have got us here so far. Now, we, mm. don't, have to, we don't have to believe that there's a, a sky daddy or any of that other what we think is ridiculous but uh what what others may not and others may see things as allegory um that allegory holds a place until science can step in but i think it's just really important for us to understand to, to be mindful like like dread was saying just be as mindful of the fact that this is going on inside you mm -hmm. inside your mm -hmm. head and 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 it should be we sh we should be excited about replacing it with fact um, but we can also enjoy the stories as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also think culture evolves in the same way too, such that right. even Art if you, is, is this like that selection pressure impacts culture as well. Term turns how we interact with each other, even if we never met each other, like it sets the guidelines and frameworks for how we, like, as Eric said, and as you're pointing out, like how we see the world and how we interact with reality. Mm -hmm. I do have a weird tangential question. Uh, do you suppose that if we are the products of uh, evolutionary pressure to, to remove people who don't run away when the bushes rustle, rustle, and that nowadays we don't necessarily have tigers hiding in bushes, so like kids and people can just be raised with 
with any sort of, you know, uh, compulsion to stick around any kind of rustling of bushes. Would you, ex would you think that explains why we have so many more wing suit gliders in this generation now compared to like caveman times? Uh, yeah. So more, creating more that? Yeah, we're kind just of, like, we're people wired just do, to be anxious. Yeah. Or people who like just do crazy extreme sports that would oh, yeah. never fly yeah. in caveman times yeah. because cavemen would be like, what are you doing? We need to get food and shelter. Why yeah. are you jumping out of a plane with a helmet on? It's like, that makes no sense. The helmet's wearing you for protection. That makes no sense. <clears throat> I'm a rock risk climber. Is, yeah. Risk is too high. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel we, like. I think we see a lot more of that if we ever came up with like a universal income where people didn't have to work every day. Yeah, I mean, uh, using our imagination and taking chances and, and just looking for thrills. Yeah. Would be, uh, day -to -day thing. Exactly. I feel like we have way more mm. thrill seekers now than we've. Mm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of what the ready, ready player one book and movie was all about. Right. right. People were just, I mean, it, it was all about like just extreme. Yeah. For me, that's what the nineties were all about. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good times. Well, now Skate, that is true. Skateboarding. Too. Ty, if if you think about it, when you're young, you're mm. you're more you, you you take more risks too. Certainly with yeah. your body. Yeah. Oh yeah. Your sense of mortality isn't yeah. uh, very well developed. Yeah. That yeah. plus I I mean that's so age, little. Larry's like, age. Like when I'm ten, the amount of time I've invested in my body cognitively mm. is like a year, maybe two years. Like <laughs> that's like my long term thought capability. But like when I'm thirty, it's like oh geez, I I went through school. I have a job. And I have to pay off. The, I just paid off this car. There's no way I'm, I'm gonna go bobsledding. I I don't want to break a leg and something like that. Like I have too much to think about. That makes sense. Um, just to go back to anthropomorphization, I think there's a, a interesting aspect that I'd like to touch on. We only have a little bit more time before the end of the show, but doing it not to non-humans, but also humans. So like when we take like a Jesus Christ figure and apply a bunch of characteristics to a person that may have existed, but to the point where it characterizes them to the point where there's no way in a reasonable sense, a person like this could have existed. Mm -hmm. where they're like doing magic tricks and walking on water and like healing the sick and stuff like that. You've turned a, a caricature of a person into a fable. And right. you like anthropomize basically a legend as yep. in someone you can talk to. That was a good point in uh, Braveheart actually was uh, when uh, one guy was introduced to uh, uh, William um, whatever his name is, William Wallace. He says, oh, I heard you're seven feet tall and, you know, 300 pounds. And you know, ar, ar, ar. clearly he was just a man. Very <laughs> <laughs> good on that, by the way. Yeah, very good. Yeah, nice. <laughs> That's my right. brook. Cool. So we got accents and with more toxins to spare, we're going to come back after the break. Larry, why don't you take us out? Thanks. Okay. Uh, this is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be back right after this short message. Can we get a mic check from JW? Because I Digital like Free you tried Thought to say something radio that I didn't get you. Well, I, all I, I, I yeah. can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Gotcha now. Yeah. Oh, all so, I tried to. When you said like uh, that the 90s was like that, all I tried to interject was I think the same argument could be made for the 60s. Maybe, yeah. Anyway, we're back. Larry, why don't you give us some local news? Okay. You're recording? Yeah, <laughs> so. of course I am. This is one file. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Welcome back. I'm Doubter5, and this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today's Sunday, April 26, 2020, and this is the second half of the show. Let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK has been around since 2002. We're in our 18th year and have over 1,000 members now. You can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org. When we start having meetups again, you can join us at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria in Knoxville's Old City every Tuesday evening around 5.30, happy hour. Uh, by the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one! You guys got to get in on that. That's right. Another large free-thinking group here in Knoxville, the Rationalists of East Tennessee. RET can be found at rationalist.org. Click on that and uh, go. Oh, Click on upcoming events once you go there. 
Uh, earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about the Knoxville Atheist Call-In television show. Uh, well, it's called Freethinkers United Co Coalition in Knoxville. It's online at YouTube, streaming video. Just look for Freethinkers United Coalition when you get there. Cool. And remember, you can find archives of their shows on YouTube where a fan has been posting them. Also, if you're interested in getting involved in the TV or the radio show, just come to an Ask Meetup or RET meeting and talk to us. Or just go to Facebook, go to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour, and chat with us and let us know. On the show with us today, we have Wombat, J.W., Joey Woods, Chad the Impaler, Boudreaux, and Dread Pirate Hicks and Wombat. Where do we want to end up? Where, I have, where do we want to go? Pick I up. have a slight um, angle to, to pick on. I think two of the reasons why I joined or I, or I was easy to be, be an atheist in, in Knoxville uh, when I first came back, from Tennessee, came back to Tennessee was one, there was a meetup group. And two, the meetup group was very, very well named. It was the Atheist Society of Knoxville. Ask. I'm like, this is some clever advertising, man. Mm -hmm. That's good. Because one had the atheist, uh, atheist name in it, but also it had ask as like the catchphrase. And I'm like, this is so good. Everyone should follow it. And then there was like ret. And then it was like the free thick form. I was like, no, no, no. Ask. Like, copyright that. Put on Query. a t-shirt. Yeah. That's question, so good. Question everything. That's why, right. don't you, why doesn't everyone just <laughs> do that? That's such a good thing. Anyway, Free Thinker Coalition, what'd you call it? <laughs> Free Thinker Coalition, the United Coalition. Oh also. my gosh, just, just give up, you gotta give up that copyright. <laughs> it was not my idea. That's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Um, so we're talking about animals, we're talking about people, we're talking about people animals. We're having a good time just talking about like how the brain seems to try to make sense of reality. And it seems to clearly both be really good at certain things and really needs help in other capacities. And I figure what would the world look like if we had a better view of reality? Like Eric, you were saying like, if we were born evolutionarily with a better grip on reality, what would a world like that look like? Would we be able to tell jokes as well? Would comedy <laughs> completely shift in a different way? So Gosh, I was walking down yeah, the street huh? last night. I was like, no, you weren't. No, you weren't. You were, yeah. you were practicing this joke. I know you were telling me a lie. This right. is not funny. Like, how's that work? That, 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 don't, that makes me think of the, I don't know if I brought this up before, one of my favorite books uh, when I was younger uh, was a book called Flatland, a very short story. I think it was written by an English teacher, but it was about basically about math or about reality in dimensions. Dread Pirate, yep. you're shaking your head. Yep. Maybe yep. you read I it. I know the one. Yep. So the, the, the point of it, though, was a, a, a three-dimensional being went down to a two-dimensional world. Mm. and was trying to explain to the 2D shape, because all the beans were shapes, what a third dimension was like. And it was just so mind-boggling. Like, mm -hmm. they, couldn't, they couldn't perceive a third dimension because, they, you know, they're this, this flat surface that they can't point up or down. So in, in talking about perceiving reality, what if you could actually see in three dimensions? And I know people say, oh, it looks 3D, Jaws is popping up. No, we see in two dimensions, right? It's, it's just, you know, it's a, a screen, right? A, it's a stereograph. Around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we see. Made up we of see, two, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's depth. We can perceive depth, but that's just perception. Really, we can only see in two dimensions. If we could see in three dimensions, you could see my stomach, the back of my head, all at once, right? So that would be. That's amazing. gross. Like, oh, oh that is, but, well, think, about how, <laughs> think about how much that would help doctors. Oh, yep. I see right here. You got the problem. Right yep. You're good it's to go. A, you should, um, uh, you should start going down that road. I um, just watched a few documentaries this week on um, uh, the most recent discoveries in quantum mechanics. And um, I watched a lecture on how they're pretty sure the universe is a hologram. And there's also a pretty, they have a, there's a pretty good argument that our universe is actually inside of a black hole and the three dimensional depth is actually an illusion. Like you say, our universe is actually two dimensional on the outer edge of a black hole. It's pretty cool. But anyway, that's I, just think of that. I feel like every single time someone mentions quantum mechanics, there's a physics student who just like gets a cold shiver up his back. It's just like, Oh, someone's talking about me and completely, <laughs> completely ruining my field of study. <laughs> Speaking of fables. Yeah. <laughs> my best quote from, from quantum uh, me mechanics mm. is if you think you understand quantum mechanics, you do you not don't. understand quantum <laughs> mechanics. Yeah. 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 
It's a Dun- spooky Dunning Kruger effect. Spooky place. Yeah, it's a very spooky. it's a very sharp spooky drop science. off on that curve for sure. Yeah, for sure. But uh, it is fun to think about. You know. Oh, and, n- without and that's that's the point. I'm glad you brought that up, Chad, because I'm saying like, is there value in willingly believing the the fable? or believing the lie like when we're watching comedy when we're seeing like red door for star trek or 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 star wars and we can like sort of let our mind or the critical part of our minds go and just enjoy a terrible movie by jj abrams and just have fun and like hey i'm just throwing i'm just throwing some shots how dare you sir i'm just throwing some shots but like (laughs) you sit down and you just let it go and it's like i'm just here because i deserve i deserve this can't you just yeah yeah well i mean if it offers you new concepts if it gives you something to think about i think that that in itself is worth watching Hmm. um it opens your mind up to other possibilities yeah, yeah, and we've we've got an entire dopaminergic system, like reward system in our body that that lights up when we hear beautiful music. And that has yeah. nothing to do with whether you're able to grow squash in your backyard or, mm. or you know, that so there's there's something to um having deriving pleasure from things that don't at least on the surface seem like they are um a necessity to your survival or your understanding of the world. I think it might come from somewhere uh, when you've got that luxury to feel that you feel at ease. You feel like my job's finished for the day. I can sit down, I can relax. Uh, You know, when we are able to enjoy those seemingly silly pleasures, are we signaling to ourselves? Everything's okay. Everything's taken care of. Yeah. Um, I'm okay. Which is why a lot of people ignore problems. Uh, if things, if, if they're anxious situations, I'm going to ignore that. I know it's over there. I'm going to ignore it because it tells me I'm okay and and I can continue to function without a level of anxiety that makes me terif- terrified or terribly uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. There's something great about not having to think so critically all the time. That That, that actually just spawned a thought in my head. I'm thinking about like, you know, because earlier we were talking about the what could be behind the bushes and sooner or later you know when we lived in caves we had to get to a point where we had to leave the cave and we couldn't get in that moment or in that time we couldn't be like terrified to the point where we're like physically we can't be so emotionally devastated that we're physically useless so somewhere along the way there had to be this balance between i've got to go explore even though i know there's stuff out there so i mean that that'd be it that'd be a really cool, cool study to do. Or, uh, um, I don't know if there's a book out there on that. It's just like, I don't know. That just made me think about that. So wh- where did we find the balance or how, when, where did I, how did our mind evolve to the point where we had balance between the wonder of exploration and also being sober minded that there's also still things out there that might hurt, hurt us. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Right. Right. And well, maybe, was it- maybe, maybe a cave in, right? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean, or something that made your your space so uncomfortable that uh, the, the comfort out. the comfort level it offered is completely destroyed. In that, well, I mean, you that's have what predators to, by necessity do. have to go. Yeah, it's what got us out of the ocean. Right, and and these ideas, these dreams uh, and stories that we think up, it's Alfred North Whitehead. I was trying to think of a quote earlier. Alfred North Whitehead said, "The purpose of thinking is to let the ideas die instead of us dying." So we tell these stories to ourselves and we try to glean as much information out of um, the story so that when we're put in that situation, we react almost automatically. So please it, explain that. Great. I'm, I'm trying to catch exactly. that. It lets the, no, no one can agree yet. I need to have this explained to me. <laughs> well, letting I don't, the ideas I don't know die and not I'll the person. What does that mean? Sure. Could you elaborate sure. that? Sure. Is it, wasn't um, it letting the ideas live instead of people die? Well, uh, was it, was it Edison that said I found a thousand ways not to make a light bulb? Uh, rather than seeing it as a failure, he discovered so many different ways of not creating a light bulb. And there's so no it may be what, similar. There's no telling what else he discovered. Right. Uh, so but, but you can tell not. yourself you can tell yourself a, a, a bunch of these stories, and you're learning from the story rather than having to put yourself in harm's way. Mm. You create these worlds inside your mind, and you yeah. run. You're running scenarios. Yeah, you're, models you're, are amazing. Yeah, yeah, models. You're creating models, and and you're you're running them through the end, and you drop different variables in constantly. Uh, I think we talked last time. Building 
building uh, charisma, talking in the mirror about meetings that you might have to attend, exactly. yeah. saying to yourself in the mirror what you really want to say to your boss, you know, to, to try to sort of automatically program the circuits in your brain so that you react instead of think. It's slow think, fast think kind of thing, right? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Th that was Larry's image to share. Yeah, yeah that was awesome. Cute. <laughs> I didn't okay. see it, Larry. Sorry. Oh. Uh, one that I, I don't think my phone is able to send it to you all, but I'll send you all to it over the group. It's, it's a meme that I actually made, so I'm pretty This runs really well on the, on the audio. I was going to say, this is audio, right? Oh, yeah, sorry. yeah. Very, very nice. <laughs> so I, I want to uh, throw something out. It's a bit of a tangent, but there's a, got one guy who wrote all of our military marches. Uh, for example, one of our military marches is dun, 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 Like you guys might have heard that before. Uh, Canada's shaking his head, like or, or nodding his head, like he heard it. But I'm impressed. Oh, yeah. Like I'm glad it went out. But there was one guy who wrote all the military marches, and this was during a time before sound. It, it was Edison times. It was before sound could be recorded, so that if you wanted to hear music, you had to actually go out to an orchestra and listen to people play, or play in your own home and just get the sheet music from like a library or a store that sells sheet music. And because of that, there are a lot of homes that had instruments and had to learn how to play you know, guitar or piano. And when Edison came out with the ability to record music and like, uh, or it was popularizing that idea of moving from like wax to, uh, I think it was like, um, uh, not like what we're used today for vinyl, but like a, a precursor before that. And it was getting better. We we're getting better at recording sound. This guy who wrote all the, the songs for a military march was like, I won. I don't want this to happen because one, I'm going to lose a lot of money. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. I make money going around like this. Is how I, I can afford myself, but two, I think it's going to be really bad because then people won't want to play music. They'll just listen to music. And there's so much value, such a rewarding pleasure from being able to play music. And it turned out to be the case that now that we're in a world where everybody has, you know, audio that they can listen to music on, there's probably more people that play instruments today just because they're inspired by the songs that they have access to and the ability to share music than ever before. And so it goes, so it goes on two levels. One, this guy who wrote music came up with a model that he was really worried about to the point where like he was writing manuscripts about, I suspect that in the future, a lot of people won't want to even learn how to play music. They'll just listen to it. But in the reality of the case, the desire as Chad was implying to the desire of just like, rewarding yourself through fulfillment with these, you know, like really constructive pleasures, like making music, listening to music, talking to people, reaching out, doing good in your communities. Like there's an innate value that we derive from doing good things and improving our life that outweighs even the things that we might be afraid of that, that that's also able to like destroy models that we might even come up with that seem reasonable, but actually turn out not to be the case. So while if I were to just put this as like a, a, a morale, like don't bet against the ingenuity of people and the value that we derive from improving our lives. Cause when we do that, we tend to do it for everybody. And I feel like as long as we have the idea of, we try to like, as long as we have the idea of like, how do I put this? We always seek to, to improve our well being, and, and, and improve our lifestyles and do good things um, because it benefits us. Um, we, we basically can bet on that as the, the core model for like how reality works. And we may not need to be as swayed by the things that gave us paranoia and, 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 and it might scare us like shaking bushes. Aren't that bad. If we know we it's worth it to, to stick around. Yeah. I think part of the reason that, uh, people are so anxious these days is because we've got this circuitry that we just don't, we, we no longer need it as much as we did. Mm. And people are finding reasons to get anxious. Uh, you having to work this Saturday isn't necessarily going to kill you, but for some reason, because it's the worst thing that you can imagine happening to you this week, your body reacts as if it is the most dangerous thing <laughs> that might Absolutely. happen to you. Yeah. So you overreact. And the more that you uh, appease these circuits and feed these monsters, you bolster these connections and you actually exactly. build them. It's very difficult to undo. Yeah. Like bad things can actually be good things, but your body just treats them as bad things because we're working on old firmware, basically. Yeah, exactly. and, and, and you can, <laughs> idle hands, I don't want to pull scripture out, but uh, 
not with Dread you know, Pirate around. He'll he'll right. ju- he'll jump on you. <laughs> right. Well, you know, he'll, again, he'll throw some tarot ah! cards at you. <laughs> again, I I see I Gambit I see style. atheism. If, if, if atheism is practiced in any way that I'd like to see it practiced and I'm doing air quotes for anybody that's not looking at me doing air quotes practice. Cool. Yeah. Um, we as atheists could be seen as um, people like pharmaceutical companies that, that look at, let's say something like ayahuasca and this works for this group of people in Central America and we study these compounds that these people are able to extract and we can synthesize them and Mm. use them in pharmacology, pharmaceuticals and understanding the people that put this together and what it means to them um, is important and not saying these people are stupid for, or, or underdeveloped or primitive because we were able to take something that they discovered Mm. and synthesize it and then you know I, I just i worry constantly about how i i do on occasion see some of us uh, some atheists bad mouthing people that hang on to ideas that we find archaic and no longer useful when a lot of our um a lot of our improvements in life came from there yeah. So I just, I think it's no, important I hear to be that. compassionate and, and understand that not everybody's where we are yet. Mm. Mm. So, so mm-hmm. just be careful. That's all. Yeah. And, it, and it's, uh, and to extend on that point, it's, uh, I wish I knew someone that um, had been through my journey prior mm. to, to my having done it alone, essentially. You know what I mean? Like if there was somebody that uh, I could have hung out with um, that could have helped mentor me. I remember Matt Dillahunty talking about, uh, you know, sort of the his escape from the Southern Baptist uh, thing into atheism. And just uh, I remember him talking about uh, a friend of his, a good friend of his, <clears throat> and the conversations he had with him. Uh, the, his friend was an atheist and that uh, – he had looked harder and harder to find a justification to argue the point with his friend and then ended up discovering that he wasn't justified in his thinking. Um, so I think it's great that, you know, uh, if, if we're not, if we don't put ourselves in the position where we're chiding people mm. or uh, looking down on them, down our noses at them, that, yeah. we, that we actually model the behavior. Uh, that right. we that we would like to see in you know critical thinking and and all that good stuff that that is the real positive force that uh, atheism has the opportunity to play here. Yeah, you don't want to if if you're if you're chastising someone or berating someone for their beliefs, mm. it, you it it just comes off disingenuous to me. It, it comes off as if you would likely be less willing to accept that you were wrong in the future. Mm. Right. You know, if, and if you're if people tend to shut down people. and double down, you know, right. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, a good just, uh, you know, argument for why street epistemology is, is such a good tool for this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, uh, Joey just did his first street epistemology thingamabob last night for the first oh, cool. time. Also, you just started a new channel. Uh, hey, I, let me see. Do uh, you want to talk about that? Do you want to, you want to say like what some of your goals are with SE? Sure. Um, well, um, I, I was straight epistemology was mentioned to me shortly after I deconverted. I didn't know much more about it. I was kind of hyper addicted to the hip slap, <laughs> those kind of videos. <laughs> so, uh, cool. I, I felt that for a while. Like Christopher Hitchens. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's somebody out there just kicking ass. And now that I've, um, kind of calmed down a bit and, you know, gotten to know myself a lot more and found I'm, I'm getting to find my place in the world a little more. Um, I, I've, I've become awakened with the help of others to other methods of engaging with people. Um, I've watched um, a lot of different videos, um, Ty's videos on his channel. Um, the, uh, I can't pronounce his last name, Matt Monomosa. Mag- Magna Bosco? Magna Bosco, yeah. Anthony. So anyway, yeah. I, I just try to <laughs> up with uh, 
I tried to, I decided to try to come up with a, a name for my channel and with the help of the SE League um, chat group, I came up with uh, Speak Your Beautiful Mind. And so that's going to be my um, YouTube channel. And um, there it is. Yeah. Um, it's going to be my YouTube channel and Twitter feed. And so I, I'm basically, I'd like to do the table thing. I, I, that seems very appealing to me, what Ty does. And um, so I, I really look forward to it because I kind of did that anyway when I, was, when I was Christian. I was very evangelical. But as the years went by, the more I learned about the Bible, I became more evangelical inward to talking to Christians about what they what they believed about the Bible because my views were changing because it's, but that's a whole other story. But anyway, I've, I've always been a people person. I mean, a, a theater kid, stand up comedian. So I just, I just yeah. really look at it and I just really, this, it's just very, I think it's more, it's a more productive method. I mean, debates, debates, I think have, have their place. Um, and, um, contra, contra, controversy has its place, but, when it comes to something like this with a building a rapport with somebody and building like building a relationship with somebody to help them know that there are people out there and to also help them know that it's okay to question their own beliefs and the methods that they arrived at those beliefs. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. So, nice. Yeah. It's cool that you're a people question. person. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, you were mentioning something in chat earlier about doing street epistemology over zoom. Yeah. Um, how would you find your, your uh, locutors yes interlocal your local. your interview partners <laughs> yes thank you <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, how others. would you how would you come in contact with them do you have any way of advertising it or or what are you talking to me or to yeah Ty? joey no you yeah, joey either one either one. oh um i i i this is the first I've used Zoom is with you guys so um i basically did kind of a, a mock interview with Ty last night um, when we were doing the, the game night thing. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I still have a lot to learn, but learn about how zoom works, but you would actually learn a lot from how uh, dread pirate does it. Cause he just sets it up ahead of time. Like he just, you know, calls a friend says, Hey, you want to chat sets up a time and then they go have a chat over coffee. And mm -hmm. Fanny, Fanny does that too, right? Fanny does that too. There's a guy in Denmark who also does SC who just does channels exclusively over the internet with people from Finland, Swedish, and he'll speak Swedish, English, or Danish with them. And he just has good conversations with people over the internet and just sets it up ahead of time. You I have many different ways to do it. That, but uh, just over Messenger. I've done, been doing a little bit of street epistemology over Messenger. I, um, I might get messages back. I think I've got to the point where I've gotten the pregnant pause, but to the point where... <laughs> <laughs> I should have left. Yeah. And so I hope that one day that I'll, that I'll, it'll play like the, what, uh, what I, I got to learn his name, what he talks about putting pebbles in people's shoes. Uh, oh, shoe pebbler. His name yeah. is Chris. He's been on the show before. Once I get a message back from these people, I'll be like, Hey, so, uh, what's going on in your life, man? <laughs> it's like, I've just, <laughs> conversation really, it's really been on my mind. I look forward to that. Anyway, how can people find you? What's um what's your handle? And you mind giving me like all of them from the start to the bottom, YouTube, Inst Twitter, all that stuff. Um, well, uh, speak your beautiful mind is YouTube. Um, at your beautiful mind, you are mm -hmm. at your beautiful mind um, on Twitter. Um, and for my uh, comedy, is just J W Kennedy on Twitter. I mean, uh, J W Kennedy on youtube and jwk hates the news on twitter <laughs> nice you got a lot hey boudreaux uh you've been recommending a lot of books lately uh would you recommend people check out uh read ready player one by the way because i actually read i like the the first two chapters of the book are so great especially how we just like flatly tells you what like atheism is all about from start to finish in like the most casual way possible. And I'm like, people need to read this book just for this. The rest of the book is kind of schlock. Yeah. <laughs> it's just references, reference, reference. But people need to read this book just for these first two chapters because they're just like, boom, boom, boom. Don't freak out. You're going to die. It's, all, it's not a big deal. It came from, you know, things from Sorry. the sea. It's not a big deal. Yeah. I love it. People need to read that book. But what yeah, else? I, would I, I, um, I don't know uh, about books, but you, the stuff JW is talking about has got me thinking that um, Chad and I are going to make a podcast. 
We keep noise. saying noise, right, Chad? Nag on it. No, yeah. but, we're, but I'm oh saying my it God. Here out loud so that we are committed to do it. So this is the I'm I'm going to quit yeah. smoking. Thing. Right, we're declaring I, it in front of can everyone. I, can I, for once, say that I love the bro ship between you two guys? Because I, I, in my mind, I can't imagine someone coming to me and it's like, I'm going to promise you that I will never lie to you in the rest of my life. I want to, I want to make that agreement. That's what we've like, done. That's our insane. bromance. Yeah. I want it that. Is. I want yeah. that in my life. I need you can my do it right now. Yeah. I want, I want it. I, I need it. I need the, like good, the. I need the wrist on wrist handshake and. It, it is an interesting agree. thing to do, and if if. Um, not to get too bromancy with with my my boy Boudreaux here, but that's a big commitment to make to someone. I, people don't even make that commitment to their spouses, nor should they. <laughs> I think uh, that's the worst person to do this with. But uh, if you can find someone that you feel safe enough with, someone that you know isn't uh, well, Eric and I've been doing we've been doing Summit for years, and we've been friends for uh, three times as long as maybe four times as long as we've been doing Summit. Uh, so we've spent a lot of time together. I th we trust each other enough to know that if there is judgment um, coming from one side of the camp, that we can give that person the space to have that judgment and it, it's okay. Mm. Uh, so you, you really have to, you have to be comfortable enough with somebody to do that. And yeah. we're there and we may not have been there when we decided to do this, but man, we're really there now. So nice. It's, it's a fun place to be. It's nice to at least have one person that you can be 100% real with. And it doesn't mean you have to answer every question. Right. You can choose to not answer. It's like, man, I really don't want to talk about this. I mean, there's always that answer. Uh, but I will not lie to you about anything. I may tell you that it's inappropriate. Uh, and you have to be comfortable with the person <laughs> to be able to say that kind of thing too. You know, I don't want to talk about this right now. It makes me uncomfortable. Mm. Uh, so what's your safe word? <laughs> Religion. I don't know if we have one. Religion. Same Harris. Same pineapples, Harris. pineapples, pineapples. <laughs> Jet Pirate, where can we find your stuff at? Uh, so I'm on YouTube at Mind Pirate, P Y R A T E. Um, I haven't uh, had anything new up there lately because, of course, I uh, haven't had the opportunity to sit down with anyone, but um, I'm looking forward to this all uh, waning in the coming months and uh, getting back at it. If you want to cross post these shows that we do together on your YouTube channel, I'm totally for it. And okay, that's, cool. That's more eyes and it's more Absolutely. you. Absolutely. You know, yeah. like you've been sharing your thoughts with us. I think that's totally sure. fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess that should do me. Hey, I'm uh, a guy that does SE. I have a hobby where I like to talk to people and I think I can talk to anyone about anything. And I have a channel called Let's Chat. Uh, you can go on YouTube and just type Let's Chat and you'll see a bunch of new videos that I'm posting right now. These are the back end of our time and CPAC 2020, that was like that big Republican uh, conglomeration. I'm not, I'm not hardcore political either side, but I think it's good to go to a place where you don't think you can talk to anybody and actually show that you can talk to anyone and have like really eye-opening conversations with people who have very, who've never given themselves to think critically about their own party lines. And so, um, yeah, we did some interviews there and then went to a Bernie Sanders rally, but I'm putting out more CPAC uh, interviews and I recommend that you check them out. They're really great. Um, the last one I did was with a, a guy who was a Mormon priest dressed in a star spangled banner business suit who said that paying taxes are unchristian. And that was his topic for the <laughs> conversation. Um, anyway, check it out. Let's chat at YouTube. Larry, I think we're at the bottom of the show. What do you got? Okay. Well, I just want to tell everybody that they can visit digitalfreethought.com and uh, read all the articles that we put up there uh, on these uh, subjects that we're discussing these days. Uh, be sure to click on the blog button for those articles. We also have all of our radio show archives uh, on that uh, link. It's digitalfreethought.com. Also, there are atheist songs and just all kinds of good stuff on there. A lot of uh, atheist thoughts, resources. Nice. Um, also, uh, I have a book out. It's you sure uh, do. Atheism. What's it all about? It's available on um, Amazon and other book, good booksellers all around wherever. Um, by the way, if you want to uh, submit some questions for the show that we can then discuss and answer, uh, send them to Ask an Atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. You can also and, put them uh, on Reddit and the Street Epistemology subreddit, and we'll okay. go over. There's a lot of people who post there, and we're way backlogged. 
All right. <laughs> We're so backlogged. I'm so sorry. I haven't gotten to the questions yet. <laughs> and also our podcast, this podcast is available on Stitcher, luminarypodcast.com, iHeart, et cetera, et cetera. Just yeah. look for it. It'll be there. And I always like to lay, remind everybody at the end of the show that everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. It's the only life you got. Yep. So everybody say goodbye. That's the end of the show. We'll goodbye. see you next week. That's goodbye, the end of the show. everybody. See you, everybody. Arr. Take care. Bye-bye. Perfect. Let me end the meeting.